once you've created a new production in StageRite, the next thing you'll do is enter the stage dimensions. From the settings page, you'll select the stage dimensions and choose if you want your production in feet or in meters. From there, you'll enter the width of the stage, that would be the proscenium opening, the depth of the stage, and the offstage width, that would be the space you want to show on both sides of the stage, offstage in the wings. And once you've set that, you'll edit the permanent stage by pressing the edit button. Here you'll see a grid reflecting the dimensions you've given. Here the number line goes out to 19 on both sides, the center line here at center, and the stage goes 31 feet up. Now on either side you can see white space where the grid stops. We recommend you use the full proportion of the screen so you can place objects or to place text boxes as you document. So if you want to go back and make any changes, you'll simply navigate back and enter any desired changes. Here I'm adding a bit more offstage width, and if you go back and see the grid, now you can see that the grid uses the full screen, which would be useful as you document your production. Now by using the Shape tool, you can add any object onto your permanent layer. Here I've drawn a line, and I can change the width of that line by dragging the right edge to the width that I want it to be. I can copy and paste and drag the new line to a new location. By using Control c Copy, and Control v Paste, I can make another copy and drag that line to another location. And by doing this, I can draw all the wings on stage right. If I select all of them at the same time and copy and paste, I can drag all of them to their new location stage left, and now I have a matching set of wings on both sides. Now, if you wanted to add a curtain, you can select the curtain from the Shape tool, drag it to its desired length, and then move it to its position. You can also change the color of that curtain by using the edit bay at the bottom of the screen by changing the line color and make the curtain whichever color you want. You can also add structural elements onto your permanent layer. Here, let's say there's an elevator on the stage, represented by a square that I'll grab from the Shape tool. I can drag the size of it by adjusting the top corner. Let's say this represents the elevator that lives at center stage. I can change the color of the line. I can also change the fill color. For this example, I'll leave it empty and leave it in gray, but it's important to remember that whatever you put on the permanent layer will show up on every chart in the production. So elements that are structural, things that never move, are best to keep on this layer. So that's how you draw your own ground plan, but you can actually import the scenic designer's ground plan too. Here I'll delete all the drawn items and say, for example, you've received the de designer's ground plan as a PDF. You'll save it as a JPEG onto your desktop, and then here, using the second to last icon, you can select that image from your desktop to import and hit open. Now this will be the background that shows up on every chart. Now you have to enter the dimensions of the actual image. Here it says 38 by 31, but remember 38 was only at the proscenium opening, and my drawing here actually shows the offstage space that we added. We added 9 feet on either side, so I'm going to add the 9 feet on both sides and enter 56. And then hit save and go back to the grid. And now here's the image that I imported that lays on top of the grid, which will show up on every chart, the designer's ground plan. Now you may decide to customize your number line at the bottom of your chart, so you would go back to settings and edit the number line. The default, of course, is one number on each foot or meter, but say you want numbers every three feet instead. Just change that in the editor, and you can see the preview at the bottom. Number one is on three, two on six, three on nine, and so on. Once you're happy with the way it looks, press save. You can also choose not to show zero at center and just have the numbers evenly spaced across the stage. Just turn off the switch and it'll space the numbers evenly. Now once you've imported a ground plan, created a scene list, or imported any other set piece, you'll notice you won't be able to change the stage dimensions. However, if you really want to go back and change those dimensions, you certainly can. You just need to do that by deleting any of those imported items. Just go to the permanent layer, go onto the grid by hitting edit, and delete any of those items from that page. The other thing you'll want to do is delete those items from your set piece list. Simply go there, delete it from that page. And now if you go back to your stage dimensions, you'll notice you'll be able to make the adjustments to your stage dimensions. The same rule applies if you've created a scene list. Just simply go in, delete the scenes you've created, and you'll be able to make the adjustments to your stage. Now if you don't want to delete any of the work you've done, there is another way to change the stage dimensions by using the copy production function. 
Here you can give it a new name. You can decide to save it with new dimensions. You can keep it the same if you like, or you can change the dimensions. This will make a brand new copy of the entire production, but at the new dimension. That way you don't have to delete any of your work. You can just keep going and try the new dimensions. Once you're happy with the size, just delete the older versions and you can work on the new production.